Dear YouTube viewers, In this presentation, we are going to discuss about the truth about Christmas. In particular, we will discuss 1. The truth about Christmas. 2. Why we celebrate Christmas. 3. Is Christmas really Jesus' birthday? 4. Additionally, we will also talk about the origin of Santa. The truth about Christmas. The truth is, Christmas is the most anticipated and celebrated holiday of the year, a holiday that brings the family together and encourages people to give to one another. Most people also celebrate the day as a holy day, believing that this is Jesus' birthday. But what if I told you that we were being lied to our entire lives? That in reality, Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus, that the reason we celebrate Christmas is far more sinister. Join me in this presentation as we uncover the dark truth about Christmas. Why we celebrate Christmas Many people all over the world celebrate Christmas every year with the same routine. They put the Christmas tree up, they put up decorations, and lastly, they buy gifts, wrap them, and place them under the tree. Every year, millions, if not billions of people participate in the same very routine without ever asking why. Why are they doing all of this? And what is the purpose? If Christmas is about Jesus' birthday, then what does it have to do with Christmas trees, wrapping up gifts, and Santa Claus? Our Christmas traditions show no signs of honoring Jesus Christ's birthday. The reason for this is because Jesus was not born on Christmas Day. No one is 100% sure when Jesus was actually born because it doesn't say in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say Jesus was born on Christmas Day. So why do we celebrate Christmas if it's not about Jesus' birthday? And more importantly, why did they lie to us? Is Christmas really Jesus' birthday? Well, the truth is always far more sinister. The reason we have been lied to our entire lives is to trick us and manipulate us into participating in pagan festivals, just like they did with Halloween. Those who run this world have chosen to lie to the masses and convince them to participate in pagan traditions. Christmas is truly a pagan festival called Saturnalia and just like Christmas is to us now, it was the most important and anticipated festival of the year to the Romans. Saturnalia started on December 17th and lasted until December 25th. Just like we do in modern times, the Romans would shut down schools and businesses. Everything would be closed, and families would get together. Families decorated their homes with wreaths and fir tree branches and filled up stockings with gifts. The Romans spent the days giving each other gifts and feasting. The entire festival was in honor of the god Saturn, who was the god of agriculture. The Romans would even make an offering and start the festival with a sacrifice to their god. Most of the traditions of Christmas we celebrate today come from this pagan festival. How did the Romans convince the world that somehow it was a day connected to Jesus Christ? So how did the Romans convince the world that somehow it was a day connected to Jesus Christ? Just like we saw with Halloween and All Saints Day, when the Romans converted to Christianity and created the Roman Catholic Church, they brought with them their pagan festivals that were meant to honor their pagan gods, turning these festivals into Christian holidays. Falsely proclaiming December 25th was Jesus' birthday so they may justify their pagan festival. The Romans also believed that December 25th was the birth of their son God. Pope Julius, who was part of the Roman Catholic Church, declared Jesus was born on December 25th to be able to continue their pagan festivals with no one raising any question that I in all reality, Christmas is just another pagan festival that has been secretly incorporated into our yearly tradition to continue to worship pagan gods. Many people to this day are still manipulated into thinking Jesus was born on Christmas and that by celebrating Christmas, they are honoring his birth. The thing is, if we look at Christmas, not much of it centers around praising Jesus. None of the things we do to celebrate Christmas are told to us in the Bible. In fact, we can see that even the date Christmas was picked has nothing to do with Christ's birthday. 
The date was picked so that the world would blindly follow a pagan tradition to be able to intertwine a pagan festival ritual with Christianity. When people celebrate Christmas today, Santa is more worshipped than Jesus. Nicholas, who was made a saint by the Roman Catholic Church, looks nothing like Santa Claus. The reason for this, Santa Claus is supposed to represent the god Saturn as the Romans pictured him. Many old photos of Santa show him looking nothing as he looks now. Some old Santa photos even appearing frightful. The modern-day Santa we know comes from a drawing made by the Coca-Cola Company in 1931. They wanted to brighten Santa's image and make him a symbol of happiness, depicting him as a happy old man with a large white beard dressed in red and white. They created this version of Santa to promote their Coke products, to encourage more people to drink Coke through the holidays. And eventually, the world adopted the image, and it became the modern Santa Claus who, instead of only selling Coke products, now markets and sells all products. They use Santa Claus to encourage more holiday spending. Christmas today has little to do with honoring Jesus. It has become a day of materialism where people trade expensive gifts between each other in order to try and impress one another. The corporations that run our world have used Christmas to make billions, as they know people would get themselves in debt to prepare themselves for the holidays. Many people see Christmas as a day that they get gifts, drink, spend time with family, and have a good time. Even though many people think it's a day about Jesus, nothing is truly done to honor Him. I am not telling any of you to not celebrate Christmas, as this is not my point in making this presentation. I simply want to make sure you guys know the truth and know that we have been lied to. In conclusion, Christmas is a pagan festival that we have turned into a day of gifts, fun, and family time, but it's not Jesus' birthday nor in any way is it honoring Him by being celebrated. I am not judging anyone who celebrates Christmas, as I understand we have been manipulated since children to blindly participate in this holiday. But now that you know the truth, you may want to choose to celebrate Christmas differently if you truly want to use the day as a holy day that honors Jesus. Some of Christmas traditions aren't all bad. Spending time with family and giving to one another is great, but we must remember if we're celebrating Christmas to honor Jesus, then it shouldn't be all about gifts and decorations. It should be a day of honoring Him and loving one another, thanking God for everything we have. As we participate in these holidays, we must remember that we cannot believe everything we are told. We must research and seek the truth before blindly participating. They want us to blindly follow their traditions and manipulate us into participating in their pagan traditions. We must not allow them to guide us off our intended path. We must remember to help those who can't see the truth find the truth. Here is an excerpt of Brother Witness Lee sharing on the truth about Christmas. He said, in these days the whole world is celebrating Christmas. Look how they celebrate. Outwardly, they are celebrating the holy birth of Jesus Christ, but they are in the flesh and indulging in their lusts. No dancing in the world is worse than the dancing on so-called Christmas Eve. People even call such a dancing party, the holy party. This is how men celebrate Christ's birthday. Not only do the Gentiles behave this way, but even many Christians also are carried away by the tide of this age. Many send Christmas cards to each other, greet each other with, Merry Christmas, set up trees at home, and hang little light bulbs on them. It seems that if they do not do these things, they will not be fashionable. I am afraid that among the young brothers and sisters, some have also done this in the past. Please remember that all these are fallen things. Today all of Christianity has fallen into Babel. There is not a trace of God's ruling, not a trace of God's expression. It is altogether a condition of men forsaking God. In such a desolate age, God needs young people to rise up to turn the age. Let us now take a look at Daniel. How did God use Daniel to turn that age? There is an important principle with Daniel as also with Samuel. It is voluntary consecration. Samuel was a Nazarite. A Nazarite was a person who consecrated himself voluntarily, 
Numbers chapter 6. We can see the same principle in Daniel. Apparently, Daniel was not a Nazarite. Actually, he was, because a Nazarite was a person who did not drink any wine or strong drink. What is the meaning of not drinking wine or strong drink? It means not to enjoy any pleasures of this life. This is the principle with Daniel. Daniel would have said, I do not want anything that the world considers sweet, joyous, or satisfying. Why did Daniel drink neither wine nor strong drink, nor partake of the king's diet? It is because all these things were related to idols. What the king of Babylon drank, as well as his meat and grains, must have been offered to the idols. At least those meals were not clean according to the ordinances on cleanliness in Leviticus 11, it was defiled food. Daniel said, I will not be defiled by that food. The young people of the world may participate in it. But I will not have a part in it. In principle, Daniel and Samuel were the same, both were Nazarites. Daniel refused everything that men enjoyed and boasted of. He refused everything that would offer him some position in the world. He was a voluntarily consecrated one. Finally, may I give you this Bible verse in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be fashioned according to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and well-pleasing and perfect. Thank you for watching this presentation. May the Lord bless you with these words. Dr. Song Chong To December 22, 2023